Today, we look at three cases of cold-blooded murder where the killers were all caught on camera. First, there is this case of Keith Melvin Moses, who committed the most brutal murder only to return to the scene and kill again. Then we have the case of DeRodney E. Russell. When police pulled him over about a stolen vehicle, they found that they were facing a suspect wanted for a deadly double murder. Finally, we explore the tragic death of three-year-old Asaya Figueroa, who was murdered by remorseless adults who became fugitives of the law. The Orange County Sheriff's Department has released body camera footage from the arrest of the suspect in Monday's deadly shootings in Orlando. Wednesday, February 22nd, 2023, and police are called to Hylia Drive in the Pine Hills area after reports of a shooting. When first responders arrived, they were greeted by the horrific sight of a woman gunned down in her own vehicle. Nathacha Augustine did not stand a chance against the crazed gunman who had taken her life. Nathacha was an innocent passenger riding in the car driven by the cousin of Moses. He offered to give Moses a ride. It was noted that Moses Moses appeared sweaty and was acting strange as he entered the car. Then, Moses pulled a gun and shot Nathacha directly in the chin in an unwarranted and brutal attack. Within minutes, the scene was one of chaos, with police, medics, and reports swarming to Halea Drive. Police cornered off the area and began the search for clues as to what kind of monster would commit such an atrocity in broad daylight and on a seemingly innocent victim. But the answers the police would need would come much sooner than they or anyone else expected, as, like many killers throughout history, this sick and twisted maniac was about to make a shock return to the scene. Only, he was returning for more than just morbid curiosity, and what he did next stunned the community, the nation, and the world. It's very um, emotional here outside of Orlando Regional Medical Center. As Moses made his reappearance, he decided this killing spree was far from over. It did not take him long to find his next victim and turn this street into a war zone. Dylan Lyons was a bright, upcoming 24-year-old reporter who attended the scene for Spectrum News. With him was his photographer, Jesse Walden. The first shooting happening near the corner of Hialeah Street and Harrington Drive, north of Colonial and east of Hiawassee Road. Orange County deputies say they initially found a woman in her 20s shot and killed there at around 11.20 this morning. Now, later today, just after four this afternoon, two journalists were covering that earlier homicide and that's when the sheriff's office said the suspect, Keith Melvin Moses, walked up to their unmarked car and shot both of them. Journalism can often come with its fair share of danger, as many can get right into the heart of a crime scene, sometimes even while the crime is still happening. As they covered the story, the area was littered with police, so they would not have expected themselves to be in danger. But they could not have known just how psychopathic this killer really was. The News 13 reporter and photographer were covering this morning homicide on Hialeah Street. Shortly after 4 o'clock this afternoon, deputies say the 19-year-old suspect from that homicide showed up at the scene and shot the news crew. They were both taken completely unaware. Lyons was aimed at point blank in the chest, and Walden was aimed in the groin, showing just how crazed this suspect was, inflicting untold pain and suffering on several innocent people. Lyons came off worse from the attack. They were both in or near the vehicle, uh, a reporter and a photographer and un unfortunately one has passed. But Moses had not yet satisfied his bloodlust, and his next target could be anyone. According to reports, Moses then casually walked down the street and up to a house with a sliding door, where he let himself in. Nine-year-old Tiona Major would have had no warning as to the events that were about to transpire, as this barbaric madman opened fire on her in her very own home. Despite being shot twice in the stomach, her and her mother Brandy managed to barricade themselves in the bathroom in an effort to escape the imminent danger. Among the lives lost are a 38-year-old woman named Natasha Augustin, 9-year-old Tiana Major, and Spectrum News 13 reporter Dylan Lyons. The little girl's mother was also shot and, according to authorities, is in the hospital. 
Also recovering from gunshot wounds is photojournalist Jesse Walden. Walden says as a result of the assault, he had surgery, but that he's okay. Moses fled the house, but was a wanted man, and it did not take long before he was spotted by officers on the street. He was um, detained and arrested near that area right after uh, the two shootings. Um, yeah, very good description was given out. Uh, deputies located him uh, in the exact same clothes that he was wearing uh, during the shootings. Body cam footage from the arresting officers showed how they spotted and apprehended their suspect, who gave very little fight. But these brave officers were taking no chances, and they made sure this violent killer wasn't going anywhere until backup arrived. These officers would have known exactly what this madman was capable of. 19-year-old Keith Melvin Moses is suspected of shooting five people in the Pine Hills area of Central Florida, killing three of them. After his short but brutal killing spree, Moses was finally off the street and into the hands of the law. Walden wrote on Facebook, I lost one of my best friends, Dylan. Keith Melvin Moses has been charged with first-degree murder with a firearm. He has not yet entered a plea. In custody, he refused to cooperate and is even alleged to have pretended to be asleep. Even worse, it is reported he tried to let himself out of the police interview room once he was left alone. He is set to face his day in court and has so far amassed a long list of charges against him, as well as the three second-degree murder charges. He also faces charges charges including attempted second-degree murder, burglary, possession of a firearm, carrying a concealed weapon, and resisting arrest. The families of the victims had an emotional press conference. They spoke of the lack of support from Governor Ron DeSantis and Senator Rick Scott, and challenged the gun laws in the United States. In turn, Governor Ron DeSantis accused the Florida State Attorney Monique Worrell of failing to keep this dangerous 19-year-old off of the streets. Earl fired back saying, this isn't about whether or not I'm following the law. This isn't about whether or not my policies are a danger to public safety. This is about the governor wanting to control politics across the state. And quite frankly, it's dangerous because this is a democracy. It's not a dictatorship. With over 13 charges against him, Keith Melvin Moses will face a judge and jury. And despite his not guilty plea, let's hope he's locked away for life without the chance of parole. But as tragic, and heartbreaking as these needless deaths are, our next case will show the true evil of human nature as our next killers spend their time celebrating right after they committed murder. You can hear them talking on the trains, you can hear them talking and celebrating, talking about the gunshots. At around 6 p.m. November 26, 2022, and 911 dispatchers received several calls about a shooting involving several people. According to reports, an off-duty cop and security guard had encountered a group of youths over unruly behavior and also curfew violations, as there had been restrictions in place after a string of shootings in 2021. More specifically, anyone under 18 was not allowed in the station after 3 p.m. As they moved to 17th Street, something escalated the situation, and before long, the station was like a war zone. In the crossfire, several people were shot, one fatally. Speculation has led police to believe it may have been a confrontation between several shooters from two gangs that got completely out of hand. The lead investigator told an information-hungry press that the Atlanta Police Department, the city of Atlanta, we do our very best to identify suspects involved in violent crimes, and we do our job, and we're good at our job. We're doing what we do to keep the city safe. During the train ride, they antagonize different customers. Uh, they flash gang signs. Take one more good look. While APD says this guy is the primary shooter, this teen also opened fire and say they believe the third shooter is among the group. And to find the shooters who terrified the Atlanta station, they would ask the public for help. Never in a million years would I have thought that I that, like this would be a part of my story. Sadly, Zion Charles died from his injuries the night of the shooting. Cameron Jackson was wounded, but despite the efforts of the medical professionals, he also passed away, shocking the city of Atlanta. A second boy has died following a weekend shootout near Atlantic Station. Now police are asking for the public's help. Finding the perpetrators became even more urgent. This has been upgraded to a double homicide as we have a 12 year old dead and now a 15 year old dead as well. Police say that the suspected shooters could be seen celebrating 
as they made their escape. When police revealed the security footage of the suspects, they showed no sign of remorse for their actions, only moments before. All smiles and handshakes, but what you don't see is their buddy Zion. APD says he was lying along 17th Street, taking his last breaths. But his group, who his mom says he snuck out to meet up with, continued on. A determined police force was defiant against such an open and violent crime. As APD Deputy Chief Charles R. Hampton Jr. told reporters, we're going to hold everyone responsible for these deaths. Atlanta police say they're also looking for a second shooter, seen here in images wearing blue and white. It would not take long before the police made an arrest. While the teens arrested are 15 and 16 years old, they're both facing murder, aggravated assault, and gang charges. It was determined that this was likely the result of a gang confrontation, and police believe the intended victim was Cameron Jackson, and Zion Charles was tragically caught in the crossfire. All the bullets were meant for Cameron. Zion took the bullet, he's deceased on the scene, and then we have the other uh, victims that was also shot. Everything was directed to Cameron. The male in the black and the yellow hoodie, he is the main perpetrator, the main suspect. Both boys had bright futures ahead of them, with Jackson having dreams of representing his country one day. As his boxing coach, Zahir Rahim said, he had dreams and goals of going to the Olympics in 2024 in Paris. But I'm also relieved that you know, after watching the videos that the police officers released, I'm relieved that they have these guys off the streets that not another child will have to, a mother will have to go through this. A week after the initial arrests, another suspect was murdered, charged with being a party to murder and aggravated assault along with gang charges. The most surprising arrest was that of DeRodney Russell, who as the only suspect who isn't a juvenile, he is the only one named, was arrested during a traffic stop. Police were following a stolen vehicle until it pulled into a gas station. As the driver and passenger went inside the station, the police made their move. Despite their best efforts to run, police Police managed to surround them and placed them both under arrest. One of those arrested was wanted for murder in a nearby county, and that suspect was DeRodney Russell. At the time of making this video, these four suspects are still to face a judge and jury, but let's hope when they do, they are made to serve lengthy sentences for their crimes. But when the details of this case are finally revealed, they will chill every bone in your body. It will not get better unless we make it better. North Carolina, Richard Rizal Drive, September 27th, 2021. A night like any other as residents are prepping for bed. At around midnight, a car drove up to one of the houses and several people got out. What happened next shocked an entire community, sending the media into a frenzy as the perpetrators fired over 150 rounds of ammunition into the house in an apparently unprovoked slaying. Police believe some of the suspects may have been young themselves, saying the shooting has possible ties to students at three CMS high schools. The group drove off, leaving chaos in their wake. Inside the scene was one of carnage, as several members of the household were struck, including three-year-old Asaya Figueroa and his older sister. Marvis family hung orange lights on the memorial tree created for Isaiah orange because that was his favorite color. Despite the best efforts of the medics, Asaya did not survive his injuries. In an effort to find those responsible, police released disturbing footage of the crime itself. The video shows every second of the brutal shooting, showing an onslaught of bullets penetrating all over the house. You can't tell me that the ones who pulled those triggers on that Tuesday night would have wanted anybody to do to their parents what they did to Asaya's parents. Inside the house that night, Asaya's grandmother, Susan Whiteley, was about to go to sleep. After the shooting stopped, they realized that Asaya and his sister had been shot and made a frantic 911 call. Whiteley told reporters, at first I thought, I thought I heard gunshots, but I really didn't know. But then when I heard them hitting the door, I knew someone was shooting at my house. She also described the heartbreaking moment she found Asaya, as she said, when I went into his room, my grandson was in there, was holding him and he said, grandma, I think he's gone. I didn't want to believe that. There is now a memorial tree dedicated to the child. Now mothers living in this area say something must change. I thought I was dreaming. 
to be quite honest. Marva, who asked us not to use her last name, was sleeping with her daughter in the house right next to the one where three-year-old Isaiah Figueroa was killed on Richard Roselle Drive. This tragedy is made all the more heartbreaking as innocent Isaiah was only weeks away from his fourth birthday. Instead of celebrating, his family could only mourn. This is the funeral that never should have happened. For the Bible tells me so. The funeral for a three-year-old who was killed as he was sleeping in bed as multiple suspects peppered his house with more than a hundred bullets. This was not the first time this community had been through such a violent ordeal, but this time the community would demand action and fast. Meanwhile, the Mountain Island Lake community where this happened is frightened and looking for answers. As well as Asaya's house, several other houses were struck by the onslaught of bullets, and the problem was more widespread. The community continues to honor the life of three-year-old Asaya Figaro. The child was killed in a shooting while he was sleeping last week. Tonight, a Stop the Violence walk happened in West Charlotte, honoring the young life and demanding an end to senseless violence. At the time of the shooting, the problem of gun crime was on the increase. Local police Police revealed that shootings in pre-occupied properties with over 661 shootings as of September 5th, 2021. That's an 11% increase from the same time in 2020. The police tell us the city of Charlotte has now had 68 homicides in 2021. We're still shy of the 2020 record, which marked the deadliest year in two decades. These sovereign statistics make finding those responsible even more important. So the community could see justice being served for the cruel death of Asaya and all the victims of gun crime. CMPD Captain Joel McNelly would ask for information as he pleaded. Parents of kids at these high schools, what we need from you is, we need you to be as outraged as we are about this. These are people that your kids are around and we need your help. You should know whether or not your children were home the last few nights. If your children were not at home the last few nights overnight, we need to know that. With the help of a vigilant public, an arrest was soon made and by a stroke of pure luck. This is the face of the first person charged in connection to that murder. Officers were on routine patrol when they spotted a suspicious vehicle and decided they needed to speak to the driver. As they tried to pull the vehicle over, the driver slammed his foot down and a dangerous pursuit through the streets began. Brave officers managed to end the pursuit and the first suspect, Qua Tonio Stevens was finally brought into custody. The suspected shooter was only 21 years old. His list of charges included seven counts of assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill, three counts of shooting into an occupied dwelling, and felony flee to elude. With Stevens in custody, other arrests soon followed. That tragic shooting happened last week. There have been two arrests in the case, but still the community is demanding answers for this senseless violence. Detectives are asking for help locating this young man here, 21-year-old Caleb Lawrence. He's considered armed and dangerous, and he's actually the third suspect in this case. Two other 21-year-olds have already been arrested. The mother of one of the suspects spoke out as he faced his day in court, as she said to the family of Asaya, I promise you, I apologize to the family. My son cried. He apologized because he didn't do it. That's not him at all. I promise you that's not him. But these words would probably provide little comfort to the family of Asaya, who continued to mourn the loss. As Asaya Figaro's father took the podium, it took him a moment to speak. My son, <sighs> to know you was to know love. Speaking to his son for the last time, every word was filled with grief. My heart hurts for you. I appreciate y'all showing my baby boy so much love because I don't have it, y'all. don't have it. The community came together in solidarity against the shooting. I just ask that you continue to pray for Bree and the family and Angel. They are children themselves, you know, having to bury a three-year-old. You can't imagine the hurt and devastation that is causing them. Very sad and an emotional day for his family especially. Asaya only got to live on this earth 
for three years. And everyone affected by the senseless death of Isaiah paid tribute to his memory as they prayed for justice and an end to the increase in gun violence, which is plaguing West Charlotte and leaving whole communities living in fear. Each of these cases are as shocking and heartbreaking as each other, but we can rest a little easier knowing these killers are currently detained and will hopefully spend the rest of their natural lives behind bars.